We're now now. What happened to then? We passed it. When? Just now. We are now now. Go back to then. When? Now? Now. We can't. Why? We missed it. When? Just now. When will then be now? Soon. How soon? Sir, what? We've identified their location. Where? It's the Moon of Vega. Good work. Set a course and prepare for arrival. When? 1900 hours, sir. By high noon tomorrow, they will be our prisoners. Ooh. Ooh. Well, well, great. So em- Emily's mic works. Welcome to today's podcast. It's Emily quoting the entirety of Spaceballs. She can do it, too. Oh, son, don't get me started. I can't actually do it. I thought you could. I had the I utmost faith in you that you could. I know I can. The entirety I've l- of Spaceballs. I've literally done it before. It's a it's a very sad special skill of mine. Guess what we're doing this episode? Just kidding. Hi everyone. It's the Tudor Spaceballs. Spaceballs episode. Spaceballs the podcast. <laughs> um, D- Garrett, I don't know if yet? I told. Garrett, I don't know if I told you this, but um, one of my best friends from middle school sent me a onesie for the baby, and it says mm-hmm. Spaceballs the bodysuit. That's amazing. It really, truly is. That's so good. I know. It's my favorite thing she has so far. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure on the rest of the family at all. No, they lose already. <laughs> All of them Unless they get you space balls the crib. All of <laughs> <laughs> All of them acknowledge it's a great gift. Oh man, what if he just made the whole nursery themed space balls? <gasps> Can we get her a little a little toy yogurt? May the Schwartz be with you. And her nightlight is Darth is a uh, dark helmet's helmet. You just know, most most parents dream of living vicariously through their kids by introducing their kids to Star Wars. But you, <laughs> we take space it to balls. a different level. Our kid Movie is that gonna isn't really s- for kids. Our kid is going to, dude, did I, my family loved that movie so much that my little sister's first full sentence was keep firing assholes. That's amazing. It, it explains it, a lot it really, too. It really truly <laughs> is. Um, so anyway. Hey guys, I'm Garrett. I'm Emily. I'm Jeff. This is a podcast about the Tudors. Eventually, <laughs> sometimes that sounds we like talk a much better title for <laughs> any of this whole this whole show. Tudors eventually. <laughs> <laughs> then suddenly, Tudors. <laughs> well, I like that title. <laughs> Rebrand. Our show's called Tudors Tonight. Why? It's because it's like a talk show. No, it's because we start talking about the Tudors later on in the night. <laughs> 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 We're gonna go through a big old rebrand. How, sound good? <laughs> yeah, I think I think we need to, you know, talk to marketing and talk about uh, rebranding the whole thing. I or am our marketing. Our whole marketing team. Your whole marketing team of me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, Tudor hardly know. It's just not very SEO friendly, and um, <laughs> just gonna. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey guys, everybody wants us to know that Oklahoma is the state with the panhandle. Yeah. No. Oklahoma. I had, well, I, that's all I know about. I, I brought up to my coworkers a couple of days ago how I went on this weird tangent talking, asking about how do borders made. And we had this whole discussion about like United States and borders. And I guess like we found a fun, interesting stories. Like, so like Missouri has this little like, n- like I don't know, snaggle tooth at the end on the bottom, like I think east corner of the state. Yeah, it's because uh, some guy owned that land when they're side, and he he said, like, I want to be part of Missouri. Like he specifically just wanted to be part of Missouri. Did Did you hear there was a guy in in Australia who created his own kingdom, <laughs> and like literally it was his own. It was like his private land, and he made it into a kingdom somehow. <laughs> It's all right. That um, that is one of my crazy dreams. There is to own. Does have my own sovereign nation? Well, there's also the Battle of Toledo. Toledo, Ohio. Yes, <gasps> it was between Michigan and Ohio. <gasps> and Does so, this have anything so to do w- with sports? Well, so when you look at it, so when you look at like where Indiana and Ohio are like kind of meet Michigan, Ohio is just slightly, I believe, like lower than Indiana's border yeah. to Michigan, and that's because of this Battle of Toledo. When was so that Battle of little, Toledo? I can't remember when it was. We looked at we were Fuck, looking at. I love history. But there's, so there's this little line 
And you can see, like you can see, go online and see like this little section that was fought over between Michigan somebody, and Ohio. Somebody make a whole <laughs> podcast about that battle of Toledo. So yeah, we had fun. Like we had a whole serious discussion talking about like Boris in at office. Um, somebody recommended that we watch an episode or there's a history special called how states got their shapes. So we should check that out. Also, you guys remember when I was complaining about the sixth finger last week on, uh, yes. the book? Yeah. One of our listeners told me at the end of that book, I'm a fucking idiot for not reading this. At the end of the book, Alison Weir puts in her notes that she added a sixth finger because according to George Wyatt, who was a grandson of Thomas Wyatt, one of the guys accused of sleeping with Anne, um, he had firsthand knowledge and saw the finger, but still, I, I feel like that's hearsay, not so much firsthand. It's it's more like, like sh- 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 I mean, Thomas Wyatt escaped getting executed, but he probably still didn't have very fond feelings towards Anne. So um, that's why that extra finger was put in there. So I guess I should just read. That. There's only one way to find out, and that's to dig up Anne's corpse. <laughs> they don't know where her corpse is. You guys want to start digging? Fuck yeah, if they found Richard the Third underneath a car park. Who knows exactly. where they could find. Where do you think we could find Anne Boleyn? Um, a public toilet. Aw, yeah, that sounds accurate. A Henry hat store. would be happy about that. Anyway. Anyway. No one heard me. Um, What'd you say? A hat store. Ha. That's good. <laughs> or a glove store. Yeah. She and her brother were buried in an unmarked grave in front of the altar at St. Peter's Ad Vinicula within the tower. And then so we for, just got to go there. Well, they were forgotten. And then in and then about 300 years later in 1876, there were bones discovered during a renovation and um <laughs> it was a woman between the ages of 25 and 35 and she was decapitated. They think it was Anne, but it also could have been Catherine Howard. <laughs> it could have been anyone. It really could have. He just um, kept burying all his head, headless wives Margaret, in the same place. Margaret He's like, Pohl, eh, it's just easier. Lady Jane Grey, Lady Rochford. Um, so they only discovered four bodies. I think oh, it says the remains of Catherine Howard had seemingly disappeared. Perhaps due to the quick lime found in the graves. Um, she, uh, Queen Victoria had the bodies exhumed and placed in individual coffins. And they just kind of guessed. So maybe I got, maybe Anne Boleyn's body was found, but they got to do DNA tests, which I, I think they could do through matrilineal DNA, which is what they use to identify all that shit anyway, because the current maybe royal Elizabeth family... Elizabeth just had children. We could probably do it that way. Well, the current royal family is descended from Mary Boleyn. Okay. Yeah. Also, you should be proud of me because also when we were discussing borders at work, I so we were talking about Virginia, West Virginia. I go, do you know why it's called Virginia? <gasps> it's named after Queen Elizabeth. And they're like, really? And like one of the guys, like, I thought it was Queen Victoria. I go, no, it's Elizabeth because she died a virgin. Quotations. I love you. <laughs> that just got me pregnant again. Cool. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what, it was like what? How many weeks are you now with Evelyn? Uh, twenty. 28 weeks when the episode goes so people out. People ask you how, if you're pregnant, pregnant, you're like, well, I'm 28 weeks and one week. Wait, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can technically get pregnant with two babies at two different times. Yeah. Well, it's I've a thing. I've never heard that before. I mean, it it's usually within like a month or two of each other, but it can happen. Things I now know. I know. The more you know. Do, do, do. I think we've got a, done, a, done a good job of keeping the randomness to tutor randomness. Yeah. Go us. Well, we're just going to talk about something else the rest of the episode. <laughs> Space As balls. we do. What'd you say, Gare? As we do. Yes. Uh, no, I actually have a, I have a topic for this week. Are y'all ready? Mm-hmm. To rumble. Let's get ready to rumble. Well, now we owe them money. <laughs> no, just cut that out or make it sound different. <laughs> Artistic license. <laughs> We are going to talk about the Duke of Buckingham. Ooh, like, like Buckingham, Buckingham, right? Like yeah, and every Buckingham time Palace? I like Buckingham Palace. Every time I say the Duke of Buckingham, I just want to say the Duke of Buckingham. It does sound a little, little uh, hoity-toity. I do just visualize it, him with having huge, huge pair, like buck teeth. Like, oh, 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 oh. a giant chin. 
and he can't close his mouth all the way. Uh, How about I just do the whole episode like this? Lifestyles of the rich and fuck that and would be And literally everyone is has tuned out. That yep. would be so good. We lost so many listeners. Lifestyles just of the rich seconds. and famous, but with Henry the Eighth. And he brings people into his bedroom and he goes, This is where the magic happens. I just think of cribs. Uh, you're mixing cribs and lifestyles of the rich and famous. Oh yeah, sorry. Lifestyles of the rich and famous is more British. Cribs is very American. I think I'd rather see Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And these are Henry the Eighth's eight yachts. <laughs> and I ran my $60 million lot into his $60 million lot. That's oh, called flirting. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, anyway, the Duke of Buckingham. <laughs> Let's yeah. get back. Let's go back in without the voice. Without the voice. So, this Duke, his name is Edward Stafford. Do you guys remember how confusing the names are? Oh, yeah. Because they all have the same name. Yep. And then they also... Yes. Okay, so they have their, their family name. So you are Jeffrey Simpson. You're a Garrett Kayser. Um, and then they would have their titled name. So they kind of go by their title. So um, his name was Edward Stafford, and he was the Duke of Buckingham. So he is, before he was the Duke, he was called just Stafford. But then once he became the Duke, he was Buckingham. Hmm. Okay. So it's like Charles Brandon. We we know Charles Brandon, but he became um Oh fuck, not Stanford. He was the Duke of Fuck me. The Duke of something with an S. Suffolk, Suffolk. He was the Duke of Suffolk. Um so he was sometimes just called Suffolk. But weirdly, I do think most people call him Charles Brandon. Either way. So the third Duke of Buckingham, his name was Edward Stafford, and he was born February 3rd, 1478. So he was born right during the Wars of the Roses. So Edward Stafford was the third Duke of Buckingham, and he was born February 3rd, 1478. So right in the midst of the Wars of the Roses. Um, Family history time. His mother was Catherine Woodville, who was the sister of Elizabeth Woodville, who was... Henry the eighth's mom. So Henry the eighth. No. Fuck. I got that wrong. Too many Elizabeth's. Elizabeth Woodville was the wife of Edward King Edward the fourth. And the grandmother of Henry the eighth. So they were kind of cousin. Henry the, the seventh and Stafford were kind of cousins, so Henry VIII and Stafford were kind of cousins. I thought I had it right, but Jesus, there's too many Elizabeths. Sorry, guys. Send all corrections to Tudor I Hardly Know Her on Facebook. Yeah, please. No, I know that. I know I'm right about that. Elizabeth Woodville was Henry the Seventh's mother, so Henry the Seventh. Yeah, there we go. Henry the Seventh was. Edward Stafford's cousin, so Henry VIII was Edward Stafford's cousin or first cousin once removed. What does that make it. us? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, but as the Tudors have shown us many times, family doesn't really mean shit. Either way, interesting fact, they're related. <laughs> so he was the eldest son, so things were pretty shiny for him. Um, he had a younger brother. We're going to play guess the name. Edward. His name was Edward. <laughs> Hell, we're not that creative so far. I've learned from history. <laughs> Charles Brandon did have like two sons named Charles <laughs> or two sons named Henry. So, I think it was uh, the Henry because I think it was like trying to get on Henry's good side. For Garrett, his. what do you think? What was his brother's name? Edward. His name was Edward. <laughs> Charles. No, it was Henry. Jeff had it right. All right, but he had two sisters. Let's guess the sisters' names. Mary. Nope. Edward. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine. No. Elizabeth. Yes. And? Anne. Yes. Ah. The baby book in those days was just like 10 names scrawled on a piece of parchment. It was just a six-sided die. It was a post-it note. It was a post-it yeah. note. <laughs> Ye old post-it note. They just rolled a dice for it. <laughs> and you are going to be and you Elizabeth. Are the, Again. You are the These third. These dice are weighted. You are the third sister named Elizabeth, so <laughs> you're good. Um, 
Apparently being executed was a family tradition, spoilers, because the second Duke of Buckingham was executed, so his dad. Um, here's how that went down. Uh, when Richard III came to the throne, the second Duke was like, uh, yeah, I'm totally on his side. Then he slowly realized that Dick sucks and he was going to go hang out with Henry VII. So he tried to launch a rebellion. It was before Henry VII was really ready or able to come over successfully. So he uh, was captured and executed by Richard III. So, uh, yeah, when, you, when you're executed, you kind of lose everything. So his whole family, lost, all the, the sons and the daughters, they lost their land, their titles, their honors, etc. Um, he, so he was beheaded without a trial, by the way. Um, and all of his honors were forfeited. So he was hidden throughout the rest of Richard III's reign, but that didn't last long. And he was a little kid because he was born in 1478. Um and then when King Henry the Seventh popped on across the pond and snatched the crown, uh, he was created as the son of the guy who tried to help him. He was created a Knight of the Order of the Bath. Please remember, when you were made a Knight of the Order of the Bath, you literally bathed. <laughs> like, so you're just the Knights of just bathing? The Knights of taking a bath. <laughs> um, that sounds like a, kid's, what? like a kid's show character. It does. I'm, oh. S- I'm Sir Bathington. That's like the the kid. It's it's to teach kids who don't like showering or bathing what they have to do. And Henry would be like the stinky guy that everyone's supposed to hate. <laughs> um, he was also made the Duke of Buckingham in that time. So he was he was still eight. He was like eight years old at that time. <laughs> it was only like 1486. So he was he was itty bitty itty bitty baby. So uh, Margaret Beaufort got his wardship. It wasn't a wardship like a Dick Grayson Batman wardship. It was more like Margaret got all of their money be- of the land that they quote unquote owned because they were miners. They couldn't manage it, so she just kind of got that money. So <laughs> people always looked for wardships because wealthy kids would wealthy kids had dead parents all the time, like Batman. And um, history is just made up of Batman. It's just history all is just the Batman. all Batman. <laughs> um, now, now, um, if you, if you would take someone on with a wardship like that, um, would there be a point where they would get all of their stuff back? I think when they when they, they, when they, age, they or like became when they married or yeah, when they became of age, they should. Uh, but usually, what happened with young females is that the family that gets the wardship tries to get the daughter that that female ward married into the family so they can keep everything. <laughs> Um, sons, not really possible Mm -hmm. so much. I mean, they can marry their daughters and set their daughters up for wealth, but yeah, when they became of age, they got it all back. Um, but he was educated throughout Margaret Beaufort's various households. She never really raised, she didn't raise him or anything like that. She's just like, give me your money. We're good. Um, Edward was present at a bunch of really cool baller stuff. Like when Henry, the future eighth, because he wasn't. (laughs) <laughs> yeah he was made duke of york in 1494 which was like you're not the prince of wales but you can be a duke so <laughs> um uh he was also during that time made a knight of the order of the garter they had a big beautiful garter that they put on their calves they were very literal <laughs> god look at that garter yeah i'm just imagining him like just like strutting his leg around like there's a scene in the tutors show where uh Earl, the Earl of something, Hen- uh, one of the Howard children, he's made a knight of the Order of the Garter, and he's like standing pompously in a tavern with like stockings on his leg and this really big garter around his calf, and he's just like, everybody look at my calf. He's just wearing like short shorts. It's like super short shorts. It's like um, it's like it, Chevy Chase. Was it Muldoon and Jurassic Park? Yeah, the, the hunter guy. Yeah, yeah he, he was just, standing he, up like Muldoon. Up his leg, and you're like, yeah, like look at those calves. Photoshop a garter on Muldoon, and that's what they <laughs> looked like. Um, <laughs> but thing, uh, he he did pretty well for himself. Uh, by the time he was 17, he that that all that happened by the time he was 17, and then at 19, he was made captain of forces sent to stop a rebellion, and I think it said Cornwall. So I guess he was competent. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, he was also at a lot of the court receptions. So whenever an ambassador would come to town, they'd be like, let's have a party and I'll honor the ambassador. And uh, he would be present at those. When Arthur married Catherine, he was present there. And then... And then Arthur croaked, and uh, then Henry the Seventh croaked, and so Henry the Eighth became king. And he was still doing pretty well. He was made Lord High Constable for the day of the coronation only. <laughs> Apparently, the Duke Buckingham was very uh, insistent that it was his hereditary right. And if that's not white male privilege, then I don't know what the fuck is. <laughs> Like, I'm just imagining this whiny little shit being like, but it's mine. My daddy had that title. Uh, he was also made Lord High Steward of the coronation, and he held the crown. Ooh. Ooh. Pause for admiration. Uh, 1509, he was made member of the Privy Council. So, like, thing, things were pretty, like, going pretty well for him. You'd never guess that he was going to have his head wh whacked off. <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, super spoiler alert. I mean, I kind of spoiled it at the beginning da because da I, da said, da da. I said that um, it was a family tradition to get beheaded. So this is this is kind of how things started to shake up. Um, so we already talked how Buckingham had two sisters, Elizabeth and Anne, right? Mm -hmm. His younger brother doesn't matter because he was the spare. So Elizabeth and Anne both worked, but were both in um, the palace. Elizabeth worked as one of the queen's ladies in waiting, one of Catherine's ladies in waiting. I don't know what Anne did, but she was present. And one <laughs> night, so Elizabeth started hearing that Anne was involved in a, in a little um, escapade with another man who was not her husband. She was married to a guy named uh, something Hastings, probably Will or Edward or Henry. Um, and uh, her si the sister Elizabeth went to her brother and she's like, um, I don't mean to gossip, but Anne's being dirty. So you should check out, sh <laughs> check that out. So one night the Duke goes to Anne's apartments within the palace and he finds William Compton there. William Compton was Henry's buddy, his, his bestie. Buckingham got pissed. He upbraided him right there and he's like, what are you doing here? This is really inappropriate. Um, I imagine him standing there, pants around his ankles like, uh, <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't caught. They weren't caught in bed together. It's not like the Tudors, because the Tudors kind of shows this scene, except it's Charles Brandon instead of William Compton. Uh, so not not caught with his pants down. He was just in the room, which is still pretty inappropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and so Buckingham went off on Will Compton and Will went to Henry and he was like, Buckingham's mean. <laughs> so Henry came back and he's like, the fuck are you saying to my buddy? And Buckingham's like, he was in the room with my sister. And Henry's like, I give zero shits. And he uh, got pissed at the Duke. He was so angry at him that the Duke kind of ran off for a couple of days. Then Henry found out that the sister Elizabeth had been involved. So he fired her. <laughs> Catherine of Aragon got pissed that he's firing her maids and they had a fight. <laughs> um, theory is that Henry was actually sleeping with Anne. <gasps> and he sent William to do his mistress bidding. He would occasionally do that where he'd set. I, I'm pretty sure William Compton did this with a couple of different women where he'd be like the courier back and forth. Who'd be like, here's a present from the king. Do you want a bone? <laughs> um, and he would lead the ladies back. I'm imagining. <laughs> the old the, dick the pick is here, man. <laughs> he old dick pick. <laughs> I'm imagining uh, uh, the Duke walking to the room. And uh, s seeing all this play out, and then he goes to Henry. He's like, "Henry, this guy's banging my sister." And Henry's like, oh, "What? No, no." <laughs> it's like uh -uh. a, it's like a, Mark Wahlberg. Marky Mark in the happening. What? what? No, no. Um, I'm imagining it's it's that uh it's that picture of a. Uh, uh, what's his name? Kirk from the Star Trek cartoon, where he's, where he's like, <gasps> yes. his hand over his mouth. <laughs> That's what I imagine. That is exactly what happened. Um, but that happened in the in the fifteen teens. Uh, oh, fun fact: 
Later on, William Compton got married. And, wis and this is the name of William Compton's wife. Bertha. Close. Who? Warburga. What? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Warburga. Is this like the Pink Panther bit where he's trying to say hamburger? Uh, hamburger. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the Wahlbergs trying to say we like burgers. Oh, okay. So I looked it up. W-E-R-B-U-R-G-A. Absolutely. Warburger. Like a wear burger, but not. <laughs> <laughs> their burger. <laughs> yup, it is Warburger. At the burger. stroke of midnight, she turns into a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Mayor, the Mayor McCheese or whatever from McDonald's. This Mac like Tonight, or not Mac Tonight. <laughs> Mac Tonight was the, <laughs> the yeah, Mayor McCheese. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Uh, yep. Um, so or Big Mac. We're changing the baby's name to Warburger. Oh, God. What do you? What's the nickname for Warburga? Werby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining Warburga like she just uh, she sneaks out of her room at night to go like howl at the moon in front of a McDonald's <laughs> <laughs> between the golden arches. <laughs> uh, I just. I was bitten by a burger one night. It's and funny I became because a Warburga. <laughs> well, it's funny because so since Jeff and I got pregnant we always knew we wanted to use the name evelyn for a girl so it wasn't hard for us but you still see a lot of people who are like oh what kind of names are you going for and people get very weird about having original names for their kids and it doesn't really bother me and jeff maybe it's because i'm emily and jeff's jeff and those are two very fucking common names yep and your last name's simpson and my last name's simpson and i'm also one of of uh 11 children so like the the whole originality and names thing it always it, it was weird to me when people would be like oh i can't use that name lucy because my cousin has a daughter named lucy and they would think i'm stealing it i'm like what you can't fucking steal a name there are a million other lucy's in the charles world. Lit literally named two of his children the same thing right <laughs> um so then they come up with stupid names like i like just made up fucking names like i once saw some somebody who wanted to name their son axel blaze a x x e l that's a fucking video game character and i will not take any other answer for that <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it actually is but that sounds like a like a 90s like video game well, character well now i'm axel thinking blaze. <laughs> that this isn't a new thing and that people in history were also like, I don't want Elizabeth. It's too common. <laughs> let's do Warburga. Did you just sneeze? I did, but also let's do Warburga. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's from the Bible. We don't know. <laughs> uh, let's look the up the etymology of the name Warburga. The book of Warburga. The book. That's actually, uh, people thought that, you know, the mother of... Christ would, you know, nobody would take Warburger seriously, so they just change it to Mary. <laughs> <laughs> the Virgin Warburger. Okay. And she had a Big Mac, and it was good. Oh. oh man. Stop being a bitch. I want to find out. That's a mouthful of the the Virgin Warburger. <laughs> Many of the. <laughs> well, here's one that says it's a family name, like a last name, which oh. yeah. Ah, uh, the Warburgersons. Behind the name Warburga. Uh, name, uh, given names, Warburga, Werber, Werber, Werberg, Werber. Stop. No, this isn't real. <laughs> Stop. No, this can't be. Uh, there's a, I think there's a saint. All right. Now I just, what does Werberga mean? All right. I, I'm, I, I got Wikipedia. I'm on Wer the internet. Werberg was an Anglo-Saxon princess who became the patron saint of the city of Chester and Cheshire. Her feast day is the 3rd of February. All right. Okay. The name, All right, then. The name Werberga gives you a dynamic and highly strung nature. You have a humanitarian and principled side to your character and will go out of your way to help someone if you feel there is injustice or unfairness, like the injustice of being named Werberga. <laughs> 
Oh. We're going to get one Warburg. listener who has this name who's going to be bitching sorry, to us. Sorry, Warburton. So much. Change your fucking airs. name. <laughs> Warburton in Greater Manchester, previously Cheshire, is named after its parish church of St. Warburg, i.e. Warburton. So, Warburton. All right. Maybe it's Welsh. I'm naming my child Lamangelo. Lamangelo, spelled Lemangelo. Okay, I guess we should get back to the tutors. I mean, anyway. Come on, anyway. guys. You really you really don't want to hear more about Werberga? <laughs> well, that's the other podcast we're doing. It's like majority of this episode was this. this Werberga, I hardly knew her. No. <laughs> it's just like the last five minutes. Okay, so the Duke of Buckingham, he left for a few days, Thing, it, but after that, it didn't really affect him. He was still made captain in Henry's army when Henry decided that invading France was a good idea, and he attended the Field of Cloth of Gold. So he was a really good courtier. Until he wasn't. <laughs> um, and then he got mad. So he was, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, very into his hereditary rights. And he had pretty substantial Plantagenet be- blood. Do you guys remember who the Plantagenets were? Yes. Come on. They're part of that one war. <sighs> Garrett, any ideas? Uh, it was... From Romeo and Juliet, the Plantagenets and the Capulets. I hate you. <laughs> the Plantagenets were the name of the family that ruled before the Tudors. They ruled for. That's right. That was. I was going to say that right after that. Sure, sure, Jan. Like the first one was my joking answer, but then that was going to be my real answer. You didn't give me time to finish. Sure, Jan. So he had pretty substantial Plantagenet blood. So he was somewhat royal. Um, I, I, I substantial in those days was not really that much because uh they they did a really good job of killing all of the other potential claimants to the throne um but either way he also hung out with like those higher is it echelons or echelons it's echelons Echelons. that's what i thought he hung out with the higher echelons of society um so he hung out with the higher echelons of society and they would talk about their money and drink martinis and talk about stocks and wall street and uh, um, all that shit. Uh, Henry VIII grew a little bit suspicious. He's like, I think this is strange. And he was he was like, there's probably some treason going on. Uh, so let's investigate. And then he put on his, um, his go-go gadget hat and trench coat and had Buckingham, Buckingham investigated. So Henry got a lot of witnesses. This is actually one of the things where he, it was before he went nuts so he he was actually pulling people together and, and trying to do a real trial. So uh, this is him being smart and clever as opposed to being completely paranoid. And tyrannical. Yes. I yes. mean, he was a tiny bit paranoid, but... Um, well, he had a reason to be. Yeah. So he got a lot of witnesses. And then in April of 1521, the Duke was summoned to court and he was arrested. He was tried by a jury of his peers. So he at least got a trial unlike his father. And he was accused of listening to prophecies of the king's death, which was treason, and intending to kill him, which was also treason, in case you guys didn't know. Um, So he was beheaded on May 17th of 1521. This is one of the cases where they think Henry VIII was right, and he was probably, Buckingham was guilty. Um, So I guess even a broken clock is correct twice a day. That's the phrase, right? So that... Is the Duke of Buckingham? So where the palace come from? Fuck, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I thought think, that was gonna so, be part of this. No, so I, I'm the the dukedoms. I think come from like the you're the Duke of a place. So, um, by the way, if you guys Google Buckingham Palace, they want you to know it's closed right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's find this out. Buckingham Palace. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure dukedoms are, or dukedoms come from the name of a place. So if you were the Duke of Buckingham, you were the Duke of an area of Buckingham. And so maybe the palace, the, the palace is probably within that okay. area. Mm-hmm. But let's see. When, when did the family move out and start living in Buckingham Palace? Um, so Buckingham Palace was not the primary residence for the royals until Queen Elizabeth came to the throne. 
It was okay. one of the pal. Oh wait, maybe I'm thinking of Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Which Elizabeth? It was. I'm sorry. Fuck Victoria. Okay. Um, Buckingham Palace was acquired by King George the Third as a private residence for Queen Charlotte, and it was called the Queen's House. Um, became the London residence, and then it, yeah, sorry, I was thinking of Victoria. Um, Queen Victoria became the primary. It became the Les- London residence of the British monarch. So, let's see. Buckingham House wasn't built until 1710. The site um, was watered by the River Tyburn. Oh, in 15... Oh, here we go. In 1531, Henry VIII acquired the Hospital of St. James, which became St. James Palace. And in 1536, he took the manor of Ebury from Westminster Abbey. And these transfers brought the site of Buckingham Palace back into royal hands for the first time since William the Conqueror had given it away almost 500 years earlier. Jesus. Man, 1536. Right? He had a wife, marry another, buy a palace. Um, Various owners leased it from the royal landlords. And then... (laughs) I like that term. What? Royal landlords. Oh, here we go. The house which forms the architectural core of the palace was built for the first Duke of Buckingham at Normanby in 1703. I I feel like somebody explained this to me once before, but I don't understand how you... Is it you're the, you're the Duke, you're the first Duke of Buckingham, and then your children, your child is the second, and your grandson is the third, but if it goes to a different family, then they restart the numbers? I so if don't. Jeff is the first Duke and our our son became the second Duke and then um, a different Duke got it because our son was beheaded for whatever reason. And so it goes to the Smith family. Is the Smith family the first Duke of Buckingham? Somebody please. I'm, I'm looking at Jeff like he can explain this, but I know he can't. So one of our listeners, please inform me. It's probably going to be the British people. I love you, Brits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, Buckingham Palace didn't really have anything to do with it. Not sure where the name Buckingham came from. Hmm. Hmm. I'll look up the etymology of Warburga, but not Buckingham. Sorry. <laughs> I draw that line. Um, that's it. Any, is there, is there something to the ham suffix? Is If that even is a suffix. Is there what? Uh, the, the ham, like, like Buckingham. No. I don't know if that was a thing because it's like Nottingham. Which it's is just the name. It's just like what how like there's a lot of names that end with with son, like Simpson, Johnson. Williamson. Yeah, because it was like you are the son of. Oh. Like, yeah. They really liked ham. <laughs> they bred. I didn't know if it meant something like they, Hamlet. They bred pigs. Like, cause cause a Hamlet's another name for like a small village, isn't it? Yes. So I didn't know if that, it might have come from that. I don't know. No, I think it was just like. I think they're just unoriginal with their names. Okay. If we're wrong, let us know. We're probably wrong. Woo! Uh, any other questions? Uh, no. I think I'm, I think I'm good. I have educated you. Oh, wait a second! Wait a second! What? There might there might be something to this. Are you looking up Buckingham? Um, I looked up the ham as a suffix. Mm-hmm. Um, blah 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 etymology. Uh, comes from Widham. Widham? Widham? How do you spell blah, it? Blah, blah, blah. W I D H A M. Widham. Widham. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The suffix ham could be derived from one of two words ham, the Saxon word meaning settlement, or ham with two M's meaning water meadow. Interesting. A ham can also be a geographical feature roughly corresponding to a peninsula surrounded on three sides, usually by marsh. Or a disgusting cut of pig that is slimy and salty. I love ham. Ham is an abomination. Oh, ham is so good. Turkey forever. We've already had this argument. I know, and our our, like our listeners agree with me completely. Not a single one of them. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this is my podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, there's there's a whole bunch of this for like places that end with Barry and Ford and Ham. What if you combine Fine. them and you have Barry Fordham? Son. 
Oh, Barry Fordham's son. The Shallow River Crossing Village. Steen. <laughs> Barry Fordham. Anyway. Let's make a city. <laughs> anyway. Johnson Hammingbird. <laughs> Esquire. <laughs> the third. The third. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that's it for this episode, and I think I've sent out all corrections. Um, I'm really fucking bad at it. All right, well, tweet to us about <laughs> us wanting to talk more about space balls. Let us know. Oh shit! <laughs> just find my personal, find my personal Twitter account, guys, and I will be nice. What if I just tweeted the entirety of the space balls movie from memory? What if what well, if you did like a live they need tweet to prove where you're like reacting you're not to Spaceballs like, like it's the first something. time you've ever seen it? How about we Facebook Live me tweeting? How about we Facebook Live me doing the movie? Just blindfold you and then just have you go. Yes. And we'll have the movie go on behind you muted. And oh my god. <laughs> because the, one of the first things we are are, I think we're done talking twos right now. This is Find our tangent. Find us on Facebook <laughs> and Twitter. That's the alarm. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, post show rambling, which a few of you have told us you stick around for. Go. Really? Yeah. So when Emma were first like dating together, she always talked to me how she had like most of, like almost all of Spaceballs memorized, and I tested her on her one time when we started watching it. So when the beginning started with a little you know credit or like the little like you know <laughs> cue cards scrolling up in the beginning. What she did to me is that was going on. That she turned, just looked at me, didn't break eye contact, and just started doing it verbatim. The exact lines of that intro. And pro- I, scroll. I matched it. And she got like perfectly. Timing, she including. even she even waited for the. If you can read this, you don't need glasses. <laughs> like she had down exactly to it, like now, words exact and everything. It was just like. This is, I mean, dialogue. This is just text she has memorized. <laughs> I can't even remember my own life better than you can remember Spaceballs. <laughs> I've been watching that movie since I was a kid. Like, I mean, I, I've watched Ghostbusters since I was a kid, but I don't remember all the lines in that. I I'm don't. There. I don't even remember the first time I watched Spaceballs because, I, like, I think I came into the world and somebody plopped me in front of Spaceballs. Um. Hey guys, I have a thing. What's your thing? Garrett. Um so this is a public podcast. Put it away. Yeah, yeah this is this is me uh pimping things out actually. Oh, tell us about so, your um pimp. My my friend and coworker, uh Mike, he actually has started up his own podcast. And uh I would be so happy if you guys, you know, went and checked it out and you know you know, gave it a subscribe on iTunes or you know, just gave it a listen. It's, What's it's that a podcast? Quick, it's a quick one, thirty minutes. Um, the podcast is called Strange Heartland, where he wa- uh, the idea behind this, he's only got one episode out right now, but he's wanting to interview people around us in the area and find out their their paranormal slash ghost <gasps> stories, just, just seeking out haunted things in the area. Um, the first episode has him interviewing his dad. Uh, I l- really like the production values on it. I think it's... There's a lot of potential there. I might be showing up on a future episode to Yo, give one of I am my paranormal stories. So I, look forward to that. Uh, I'll let you guys know. I just downloaded if, uh, the I first episode. That. I'm fucking pumped. I love that shit. Perfect for Halloween. Yeah. By the way, it's September, it, so it's officially Halloween. Get over it. It's not Halloween yet. It's Halloween yet. Okay, so... Okay, so w- w- I've got one last thing. This is me just ranting. So if you guys don't know, I work in radio. I make radio commercials. And when salespeople want to uh, bring in a client to record stuff, you know, they, they come in, they record stuff. This family has come in to record three Christmas commercials. And today is the 19th of September. They're it's too early for that They're shit. really getting ahead on that yep. game. I don't see. I, I saw people who were like, it's September 1st. Time for me to listen to Christmas music until December 26th. And I'm like, no, that's wrong. And you're broken. I agree. I, I, I get loving Christmas. I love Christmas, too. But like at the end of summer, people were like, 
Oh, yeah, I can't believe it's fall already. No, it's not. Stop it. Stop talking about pumpkin spice and putting your sweaters on. <laughs> I Okay, I have to say I'm looking forward to the cool weather, but that's just because the heat is really miserable when you have a whole second body temperature you're trying to regulate. <laughs> oh, yeah, like I'm all for it cooling down. I mean, I'm kind of going to miss it being warm out because – when it gets cold in fall, then I know, like, hey, we've got, like, two months of this, and then it's going to start snowing. And the snow in the Midwest fucking sucks. Especially you up in South Bend. You guys get, like, lake weather. Yeah, I live, like, an hour away from a lake. <laughs> Not even an hour. It sucks. Yeah. Although there are people, like, on the East Coast, like, getting bombarded by, like, nor'easters and, like, hurricanes and oh, yeah, tsunamis no. and all that shit. So I, I shouldn't complain. Oh, uh, no, I hear about the – I've been hearing a lot about that hurricane recently. Yeah, it sucks. Hope you guys are safe out there. Oh, no, yeah. We, I think a year ago is when we were in Florida, and we seriously left Florida, like, the day before Irma. I remember that. Yeah, it was yeah. scary. It, yeah. Like, we were at the airport – in Orlando when right like with a bunch of other people all just trying to get out of the state of Florida before Irma hit it mm -hmm. so no yeah. It, yeah. it is pretty scary it's so no that's like there everyone has their own different little weather weirdness like you think about how California has earthquakes and fires all the time and no rain um yeah and no rain and then like desert usually like the big country stuff in the in the center is getting like all the tornadoes <laughs> Mm -hmm. all right true story tornadoes scared the shit out of me yeah to this day my parents grounded me from watching the weather channel as a kid because i'd freak out and think there was a tornado every time <laughs> but i thought you were gonna say they grounded you from watching twister <laughs> no weirdly they never grounded me from that but tornadoes scared the shit out of me as a little kid and they still scare the shit out of me now mm. so all anyway. right anyway all right i gotta go all right yeah let's, go let's let's finish this shit uh, hey, find uh, us on Facebook, Tudor Hardly Knower. Find us on Twitter at Tudor Knower. Rate and review. Subscribe. Have a good check one. Check out check out my friend's podcast, Strange Heartland. Yes. And we love you. We all love you. Yeah, and love you guys. You guys are baller. Um, all right. Un so until then, until next time. Next time. Yep. Divorce, divorce beheaded, beheaded died. died. Divorce, divorce beheaded, beheaded survived. survived. Goodbye. 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 Bye.